G'day guys, Mac with the Outer Circle, and today I want to actually talk about Legions Imperialis. This game I haven't really spoken a whole lot about yet, because I haven't had much reason to speak about it yet. And so today I'm going to take the opportunity to actually talk about it, because, well, there's a few things I, I think are pertinent. So, disclaimer up front at the start. I do not care about the success of Games Workshop's games so far as them failing. I don't want them to fail because their failure means an effect for me which is going to be negative as a consequence of that. If Heresy 2.0 fails, we don't get any new cheaper plastics. Uh, easier to convert, hobby, model, all of that. If they fail and, you know, we never get Khan on a jet bike or we never get an Emperor model. Those are bad things for me. And obviously, as someone who does create content on YouTube, although I don't think my content is anything special, it is in my best interest to have engaging content, which means games which people are interested in and want to discuss, because that is the genesis of content, as it were. So if they create a game that is fantastic and lots of people play it, that is the most ideal sort of situation for me because then I can, I can jump online and I get to create videos based around that game and go, wow, look how popular this is, this is amazing, and then I get tons of views and then, I don't know, profit, who knows. It's not true to create negative content. Uh, that same rule, that is, is not true. Because negative content, yes, it has its audience. But people who have decided something is negative, very rarely do they need much reinforcing. Like They're happy to just go, watch your video, say, look, I don't like this. They go, yep, I agree. And then that's it. And you'll see that the videos that are more negatively slanted on the channel get far, far less views. So the whole thought process that, hey, if you create negative content, you create profit. No, it's very much the opposite of that. Um, it's better to cast a wider net and get more of the audience than people who know you're going to be negative, never watch you. So you just lose that entire chunk of audience from the get-go. So it's in our best interest to get a great game and lots of content out of it. Now, this brings me to this subject because I haven't spoken a lot about it. And I didn't speak a lot about it because what do you say about the game system? Well, it's being relaunched in a different scale to its original scale to suit the larger scale of the New Adeptus Titanicus and the Aeronautica stuff. And any other reasons that they may have along the way. Uh, they could be cynical reasons, like, hey, they want to invalidate your previous models. They could be questions of taste. They go, well, it's easier to paint a larger scale model. We think that lowers the barrier of entry for people. You know, there are, and that's the less cynical option. And there is a, a whole host in between, right? That's all good and well. My worry is the price. And I've heard from reputable sources or people who I think are reputable. We see... Uh, in here through these articles, we actually have an upcoming uh, White Dwarf, which I think is next week, and in it we have a battle report that takes place between a Blood Angels army and an Emperor's Children allied detachment with a uh, Death Guard army. The Blood Angels half of this alone, I've been, again, pretty reputably led to believe, is going to be 750 euros, give or take. Now, combine that with the Australia tax, this box isn't going to cost much less than 1500 or well, not the box game, but to buy all of these miniatures combined if you wanted to replicate that Blood Angels army. That is a significant investment, and I think too significant an investment. Then we have uh, my predictions on price, which I made uh, a little while back, and this was based on the uh, Aeronautica pricing structure and going well how big a vehicle for what kind of money do you pay for that game and this therefore is the pricing that I predicted judging off of that and so with that in mind I think what is the buy-in price what is the price point here because this game has to be affordable if it's going to last because what will happen is I think we'll see We'll see the typical uptake surge that has become very common with these sort of games over the years, and that is a day one buy-in where people just get hyped up. People who have no long-term interest in the game, they just don't realise it yet, and the impulse desire to purchase 
kicks in. They buy the starter set for, you know, 450 bucks Australian, okay? And they're happy with that, and that's great. And then some other thing from Games Workshop will drop, like, you know, the old world or something like that, and that's it. They'll go off and go and do that, and they'll forget this game ever existed. There's always going to be that community, but I think the game will do well enough on that initial drop. What I'm concerned about is the long-term health and sustainability of a system. And I want to give an example here. Take a look at the Predator Battle tanks you see here. Okay, we've seen the sprues for these tanks. We know what's involved in them. We know how many parts are involved in them. So for something like the Rhino, you have the little crewman that you can glue into the top with his hatch. You have the exhausts on the sides. They're all separate components. This is great for the hobbyist who really wants to customize his forces, paint everything separately on sprue or whatever, very much like Titanicus players do, because this is in part marketed at Titanicus players. But I see that getting very, very old incredibly quickly for the average hobbyist. Now, the average hobbyist is such a blanket term. I don't really like it, but it's sort of the best term we have here. It is the person who walks into a games workshop off the street. They may not be completely new to it, but, you know, it catches their eye. They might have painted a few miniatures in the past, have a small 40k army, something like that. Okay, this person is the average hobbyist. Those of us who have thousands and thousands of points of armies, we are not the average hobbyist. We are sort of the exception to the rule, as it were. What I see happening is burnout. Huge, rapid burnout. Because old school epic... You bought a rhino, when you bought one of these Dymos rhinos, it was one piece. You just clipped it off the sprue, quickly got rid of the mole lines, and could paint it. These ones have assembly. That is going to grow very, very old, cutting each of those exhaust pipes, and cutting the mole lines off them, and then gluing them onto all of the rhinos, and then individually painting them all. And of course, with the increased scale, yeah, you can see the detail in these miniatures more than you could in the 6mm version of the game, now that we're 8mm in scale, give or take. You now have more detail that you have to paint, though. So the barrier skill-wise to entry just got greater. So these things concern me. What also concerns me is that we're seeing a glut of miniatures being shown. You know, Spartans, Land Raiders, we've got... Uh, skimmers and jet bikes and bikes many of these it seems are not going to be in the basic rules of the game they are an expansion pack to the game and i can't confirm whether that or not that is true that's just what i've been told um now if these are not in that basic game well then we already have a problem of rules divergence setting in from the very get-go now, rules divergence is something I spoke about a lot with Heresy 1, and that is where we have an awesome game system, and yet rather than actually you know, doing something with that game system uh, to codify everything and put all of the rules into one place, we spread it out over many, many releases. And that becomes really annoying because you get to a point where to get all of your rules together, you suddenly have to lug a library around with you, and nobody wants to have to do this. And so I look at these sort of releases and I go, well, hell, if these aren't going to be in the basic box, that's already adding an extra book to the list. Who wants to carry an extra book in the first five minutes of a game system? When a game first releases, everything that's ready to go needs to be included in that core rule set. Okay. Now, I could be totally wrong on this call that I don't think they are. And if it is, then totally ignore me and I'll apologize when the time comes. But... As of recording, I don't believe the rules for these guys are included in that set. Therefore, you're creating an artificial problem, okay? And we're being then sold the solution to a problem which only exists because the company created it. And I don't like that situation, okay? It doesn't uh, speak to me of customer service because I am here to help you to inform your purchasing decisions as the customer to try and save you your money to make sure you get the best bang for your buck and you don't get buyer's regret, okay? There's a whole host of reasons why I do what I do here, uh, and those are among them. And so I look at all of this, and it really concerns me because I'm not seeing something which, on the surface, looks sustainable. 
Now, that doesn't mean that I don't think this will have a core player base who is going to be very interested in it and is going to make huge forces quickly. That will definitely be a thing. And again, it will probably be the Titanicus players. Those people who are willing to play Titanicus and Aeronautica and paint that smaller detail of game, want to play that style of game over the 28mm systems, they are going to buy this. My question is, are they going to buy this enough to sustain it? My, my crystal ball that looks into the future says to me, people are going to buy one, maybe two, at most of the basic core starter set for this system to get the rules. And from there, they're going to 3D print the majority of their armies, because why not? Because with the detail of these miniatures and the 3D files that have been out for you know years at this point, the 3D STLs that are online are so widely available, so widespread, so easy to get a hold of. I mean, they can Games Workshop can go out there at this point and rip every file down they find online. They can go on to Colts, Thingiverse, whatever it might be, and, and kill every single file they find. It's too late. Too many people have opened the Pandora's box and have the files and can print these at their own leisure. There are people who print and sell. There are people who print for friends. I will happily print things for my friends. That's the way it goes. So there is no... You know, these are not 28 mil scale miniatures. The detail requirements are lower. People will be happy to have things that, okay, the exhausts are not separate on my rhinos. Oh no, less assembly for me. <laughs> you know, people will be happy with that. I don't think, therefore, this game is going to be healthy. It seems like too many sales and marketing people have got involved here and to the detriment of the game because they don't understand what the customer actually is chasing, which is really an affordable product. You need to make this system incredibly cheap comparatively to the 28 millimeter scale if you want it to sell gangbusters beyond that initial hype purchasing that always happens at the start of a system. And I mean, it always happens at the start of a system. Take Terrain as another example. We know from Adeptus Titanicus just how expensive this terrain is. Making tables of it is just ludicrous to think of the expense required. If you're going to make these Realm of Battle tiles, if you're going to uh, purchase these buildings, again, there are guys out there like um, Grimdark Terrain, okay? Uh, he makes 3D STLs for a fair and reasonable price, which are fantastic, and once you've paid for those files and you've got them, you can make as many of them as you like. And you don't have all the same assembly constraints that you do with uh, Games Workshop's tiles, where it's like they must be put together a certain way, okay? And you have more building types open to you. So your terrain is now falling into the same problems as your miniatures are, in that there are better alternatives out there that are easily available. So... I think on the whole, therefore, we have a problem here. And I don't think that Imperialis, as it stands, is going to be a sustainable venture. I think it's going to fall flat on its face. Because the company is insisting on bringing out a product from everything I've seen that is unhealthy for the customer. Too expensive and... Not enough of the factions contained in the core system. It's going to be Imperial Army and Marines. And if you're not interested in either of those, well, go jump. And then, of course, you've got the fact that people want to have their special Snowflake Marines. They want to have their Legion. Well, that means they want to have their Terminators, their special Assault Marines, their special characters, their Primarch. Are we going to get those near release? Now, you can say, Maka, be patient. These things will come down the line. What does that mean? And not to be too rude to you, the viewer, right now, but I've been hearing this for a long time. I am someone who started 30K pre the actual game system existing, okay? I was already building and painting armies and playing fan-made rules. When the game system dropped, it was acknowledged that, okay, it's going to take some time for us to get all of the Primarchs and all of the Legions, 
we barely even got through the first year of the war of the Horus Heresy before Heresy 2.0 dropped and has taken us straight to the very last year. So that middle section that I think is the most important is completely unexplored. But on top of that, we have a situation where people will say the same thing. Oh, you've got to be patient and wait for that. So it's been 12 years. Okay, I was in my early, mid-20s when the original Horus Heresy dropped in 2012. I'm in my mid-30s now. You know, heading towards 40. I was closer to 20 then. I'm closer to 40 now. <laughs> Significantly closer. So... How long is too long? Something cannot be dragged out over the course of a lifetime. It has to... People want to have something wrapped up. You know, have that bow tied around it. Take uh, the MCU, Marvel's films, right? Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, The Avengers. It got wrapped up in a neat little bow. And people went, yeah, it's been like, you know, 10 years or so, 12 years. That's probably a good time to wrap up that whole uh, thing in a bow. And they did. And people were satisfied. Uh, And then they've kept it going, uh, which is not satisfied people, but that's a whole other issue. Here, we have a chance to create a game system, flesh it out fully, drop everything all at once, and have a fully sustained game. Great. That doesn't seem like what they want to do. What they seem to want to do here is something similar to what they did with Aeronautica and Titanicus, which is drop the base game. Here's your two forces that can fight each other. Great, here have some extra stuff from Aeronautica and Titanicus because we had it lying around. Great, and we'll get back to you in 6 to 12 months with a campaign book, and we'll bring out a few new units then. That is not a sustainable system, I don't think, you know. And with what's happened with full-scale 28mm 30K, I worry that these people don't have the patience, basically, to hang around. And if they don't have the patience to hang around, these things will just die. And so my prediction as i said pulling out the crystal ball is that in a year a year and a half's time you're just going to see the diehard fans of this sort of game system holding their own little events with their 3d printed miniatures and mostly 3d printed tables and it's going to be just them there's not going to be a new wave of people who are swept up into the hobby to play this game because it is just not affordable enough to do it it's not accessible enough to do it And it's tedious. That's the most important thing of all. It is tedious. Because every single one of these vehicles has to have assembly done to it. These are not one-piece miniatures. Like, this is something that got right with the old school epic. And it was still kind of a pain in the butt painting old school epic. Because you had to paint a lot of stuff. You know, all of those marines, if you look at one of these pictures, okay? All of these marines need all of the details, all the bolt guns picked out. All of those parts are still there. They're not as large an area to paint as a 28mm scale army is, but you have so many more miniatures to paint. So when you combine that with the fact that you have to assemble it all, you have to build it all, well, people don't have the patience for it. They want instant gratification. So we either find ways to mold these as one-piece miniatures, or we do multi-part kits. But if we do multi-part kits, then that barrier for entry just crept up a little higher, and building large armies in this scale becomes a lot more tedious. And again, there's a big difference between, hey, I'm a Titanicus player, and I want to get six, seven, eight Titans and paint all of those. That is a already a supreme effort. Because you know like, I'm going to build the framework for these Titans, but then I'm going to have to take all the armor plates, the paneling, and paint that individually. And this is going to be a slow burn, you know, doing all this detail and decals and all that to get these Titans playable. Well, now you're taking all of that same level of detail, but you're trying to do it over armies. And what you're looking at on screen is a small force. This is the starter set army, what you're looking at, basically. Um, size wise anyway the amount of miniatures and then you compare that to what they are showing you as a normal size game for the system and you can see the discrepancy here what you're getting in that starter set is just enough for a tiny little skirmish I mean at least with the Horus Heresy starter set the full scale Age of Darkness 28 mil one that has enough miniatures in it between like the Spartan, the Space Marines, you and the other person each get one of those. You have enough models to play a pretty decent sized game of Horus Heresy 2. Just add a couple extra units in for Spice, whatever it might be. 
This though, you're going to need a lot. I mean, look at the Kratos alone in here. That's six Kratos. They're either going to be sold in twos or threes. My prediction was threes, as you can see here. This was my prediction on the individual sales of these different units uh, and what it would cost. And I'm sticking with them. I think I'm pretty close on the ball here. I don't know the Australian pricing for each of these, but this was Australian pricing for Aeronautica Imperialis. So that was my measuring stick. That's what I think it will cost. And this is my prediction from the 7th of July, 2023. Will it pay off? Will it bear fruit? Will my cynical nature uh, come to fruition? Or will I be proved dramatically wrong? And this stuff comes out an insanely good price point. And everything you're seeing on screen right now is 100 bucks. There is no way on earth, I'll put my left nut on the line to say that all these miniatures you see right now will be a lot more than $100. To get your four rhinos and your 15 marine base, hundred dollars Australian, by the way, not some other foreign made-up currency like US dollars. So yeah, I, I think it's going to be an incredibly expensive and unsustainable game long term, I guess is the point of this video. And therefore, I think it's going to run into issues of support because I think the company is going to just softly kill it, as in they'll keep producing miniatures. But they'll slowly dial back the support until it gets zero support after about three years. Or, as it should also be known, the Aeronautica Titanicus model. Because that's basically what they've done with those games where the support is really minimal. I mean, Titanicus has got far more support than Aeronautica does. And yet Titanicus sees less than one Titan per year for the game. And that's, you think about that, okay? And not to not to pick on Games Workshop, because this is a this is the newer, less uh, salty out of circle channel, right? New intro, new microphone, less salt. But you think about that. They only have to make one kit in a year for the game system to be considered pretty healthy for Titanicus, and they can't achieve that. So let that sink in. I mean, all they've done is turned one of the Titanicus models that was in resin into plastic, and it's the Dire Wolf, a miniature that I want to say is nobody's favorite. I use that term a lot, and people take exception to it when I say something is no one's favorite. It's not meaning that absolutely no one in the world likes it. It means that eh, nobody's going out of their way in large numbers to partake of it, okay? I said that with something like Dominion Zephyr of the Blood Angels. He's nobody's favourite. doesn't mean that people aren't huge fans of the character. It means that if you took 100 people, you're probably not going to find more than one or two who say it's their favourite character. Right? He's nobody's favourite. That's what I mean there. Well, yeah, the Die Wolf is nobody's favourite. But anyway, we're getting sidetracked here. I worry for the future of this game. And I don't want to worry for it. I want it to succeed. Because if it succeeds and exceeds my expectations then i get to make content around it and show off the eight mil and six mil stuff i've done in the past for it and i can print huge armies very quickly for this and we can do battle reports and all sorts of fun stuff but only if the game does well if the game doesn't do well there's no drive to do that beyond me doing that with my mates for fun which hey i'm happy to do it if you if you guys want to see that Hey, I'm happy to provide, but that's more for my own selfish desires than anything. Anyway, that's it for me, Mac with the Outer Circle. This is some thoughts on Legion's Imperialis, and I'm sorry that they're very negative, but, I mean, look at the track record. Look at the track record and decide for yourself what the most likely outcome is, especially if these come in at the price point, I fear they will be. If this gum and purge that you're seeing in White Dwarf here, if that Blood Angel's army there is as expensive as I think it is, based on very reputable sources, we're in for some trouble. See you all next time.